everybody. I'm BJ Flag, And I'm Rich G. And this is episode 307, Finding Your Best Clients. I mean, I'm talking about the very best clients. Best. best. This Cream is of it. the crop. Cream of the crop. Exactly. The ones you want to call and do things with. <laughs> the people you to- really want to work with. Right. Exactly. In today's episode, we're going to dive deep into the critical topic that every business has as their growth strategy, finding your best clients, identifying those game-changing clients, those who are the most loyal and bring the most business and amplify your business can supercharge your business growth. Join us as we uncover how to recognize their unique characteristics, how to understand their needs, how to leverage these insights to refine your marketing strategies, enhance your offerings, and cultivate rewarding long-term partnerships. So if you're ready to unlock a new level of success in your business, tune in now. <laughs> okay. I like that. We were we sounded very convincing there, Rich. Yeah. So what's our first tip, BJ? <laughs> understand your value proposition. This is one of my most favorite things to do when I'm working with a new branding client. Before you can think of who your best clients are, you need to understand what it is that's the best part of you and your business. Look at the business like, oh, I don't know, like Tate's chocolate chip cookies. Mm -hmm. Their competition is Chips Ahoy. What makes Tate's the premium product? the amazing crunch. They play it up on their packaging, unabashedly give you one serving of cookies, and they charge you a high price. They know their worth. They are completely comfortable with their unique selling proposition. Now, look at your business. Say you sell widgets, same widgets as your competitor. What will be your unique selling point or points of differentiation? Will you beat them on price, customer service? What else could you sell them that would be of service to them? Think of this and make sure that all your employees are knowledgeable about these key points. Yeah, and BJ, I think you hit the uh, the nail on the head. It all comes down to value. Uh, Yeah. What do your clients really value about your business, about your service, about your products? Uh, You're going to be surprised. And this happened to me too. What you think they value isn't what you value. You're promoting this and this and this. And if you really understand what your value proposition is, it might be something totally different than what you expected, what they really, because what is what they value, what they need. Yeah. And you might be providing what they need, but you're doing it unconsciously. Right. So tip two is analyze your existing clients. You knew this was going to be in here somewhere. So look at your current clientele to identify common characteristics of your best clients. Figure out what are those elements that make them great. These might be the clients who make the largest purchases or those who make repeat purchases or those who refer other clients to you. Find out what elements make them great. Then understanding these characteristics can help you target similar prospective clients. Recently, I analyzed my entire client base uh, and discovered that I've coached over 22,000 hours. Okay, I never knew this. I never knew this. And it was an interesting byproduct of me analyzing my client base. But I discovered that my most valuable and longstanding clients were my business coaching clients who have stuck around with me for years And And, it's amazing. Right. And you know what? I love that, Rich, because thinking of the analysis by the numbers helps you to understand the sheer relevance of your data, you know, the power of it and how going after new clients, you'll do it with confidence. You know, you, you sit there thinking to yourself, 
oh, I don't know if I can do it. I just did it for 22,000 hours. I can do it. Yeah, I could do it. And that number well, is so amazing. <laughs> see, I get corporate clients and they pay very well, but they're very limited. They're six or 12 months and then right. it stops. Whereas yeah. I have business clients. I have one business client I've been with for over 10 years. I have another oh, wow. I've been with for seven years. These are people that pay on time, regularly, everything's fine. And they stick around for years and we develop a relationship and they look at it. I'm helping their business every single day. Yeah. Yeah. Big doings. Um, tip number three is leverage your client feedback. Um, we have a client of ours that's doing a raffle. You know, we are the king and queen of raffles. So I'm very confident that we can help them. We sent over the steps. We have a template get them registered, how to feature them on the website and some tactics that can work. All was going super swimmingly and they came back to us with some feedback. They have 1500 tickets to sell and only three, not all very interested, but three people who can sell them the way that we had set it up. That's just not gonna work. So we needed to come up with new ideas to get those tickets sold. And we use that feedback to help us help them. Very interesting how that can happen. You know, sometimes feedback is actually a reflection on them. You need to pause and think about what it meant about those tickets. Turns out that not all three of them want to sell the tickets. So another one, you know, one doesn't want to sell them at all. One totally panicked. But we were able to work with those other two captains we made them captains and they now have formed teams to sell totally successful much happier much happier but sometimes that feedback is not helpful but it's still an opportunity think about the complaining client so much complaining or so you thought meet with your team and determine what the client is actually talking about and if in a perfect world, you could provide the goods and services that would please that person. This may lead to a new service, the ability to offer a new product, or at least it'll make sure that your entire team is on the same page and you know how to work with a client going forward. So there is a win in there. It's a little deep, but it's in there. Absolutely. You know, I regularly ask my clients at certain junctures in our coaching relationship, how am I doing? You know, uh, what do you like about, I'm saying, what don't you like? What things would you like to work on next? Uh, what else can I bring to our coaching relationship to make it more powerful for you? When I ask those questions, I get feedback and I yeah. get clear feedback because Ultimately, if I'm not giving the kind of service or response to my clients that they need, they're not going to be happy. So, yeah. I'm, you know, and so many of us in business are afraid to ask, how am I doing? You know, yeah. even if you have a retail business to have your people ask, by the way, how, am I, how, how are we doing? How was that service? How's everything going? You know, uh, waiters and waitresses do it all the time. Like, you know, is oh, there yeah. anything else I could get for you? How's everything? Are you enjoying your meal? That sort of thing. Exactly. It's always good to ask. Don't worry about what the question is. And, you know, and thank them for their honesty. It's yeah. fine. So tip four is network and build strong relationships in your community. Okay, this is going to help you find your best clients also. Attend industry events, join professional organizations, and take part in community activities. Networking isn't just about making a sale. It's about building long-term relationships. This could be a great way to meet potential clients who align well with your business values and your goals. For a number of years, I was a member of many organizations in my community, and it helped me build a reputation with many influential people. Now that I have that as a firm foundation to my practice, I frequently call or have coffee with those same people to reinforce our relationship and see how I could help them. 
Yeah. And, you know, I have always enjoyed, um, I create a list at the beginning of the week and it has a list of say 10 names on there, 10 businesses. And what I really want to do is just connect with them. No reason. No, I don't have a, an agenda or anything like that. I just want to make sure that I'm staying in touch. And, you know, the people are always so thankful that I reach out and talk and have a conversation and how are they doing? I might share a book with them because you know, we read a million books and you know, anything, let's have coffee, let's go do this. Hey, do you wanna go for a walk? I make sure that sometimes it's spontaneous, sometimes it's feels, you know, it's planned. It is the best way to keep in touch with all of those people and um, just appreciate them. So I absolutely love that. Are you ready for our book, Rich? No. This is a this is a stretcher. <laughs> the book title is Finding Ideal Clients. That's right. <laughs> How to Become Visible and the Obvious Choice, Marketing Strategies and Competitive Advantage Turn Your Rivals into uh, best prospects into your new customers. That's, I that's love this book. That's a mouthful. It is. It is. Scott Chanel. Um, it, so he asks a very important question. Are you a business owner, professional or service provider wrestling with some marketing issues? You attract too many of the lesser than ideal clients. Your price is often an issue. Your marketing efforts are not in traction what you need. This book is going to help save you from all of that. How did you like the book, Rich? Yeah, I find it, it, it it's great. It's uh do you wonder why some substantially out-earn their peers without offering substantially better service quality or advice? This book provides seven steps for a strategic direction to you finding more ideal clients. So it's really going to walk you through the entire process. It's great. Scott's a great author and it's the perfect book for our topic today. For sure. And that's it for this week. You can reach out to me at richg.com and find BJ at newrenew.com. And thanks to our editor and producer, Richard Scalzo, who makes us look great. And have an unbelievable week and catch you later. Yeah.